Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're well. Today I'm in Lightroom Classic and I've got a cityscape shot that I took in Ireland years ago and it's admittedly not a particularly great photo and so in this video I'm going to walk through some of the steps that I take uh, to craft a cityscape image that's kind of so-so and turn it into something that's a bit more interesting. I do want to be clear you can't always just take a really bad shot and turn it into a great shot or a work of art with some fancy editing. But you can do some things that will allow you to effectively create an image that looks a bit more beautiful than it started. And that's the power of Lightroom and some of the tools that I'll be talking about. So this is great for like family memories or something like that. I'm not suggesting that you can take a horrible throwaway photo and turn it into a work of art, but you can improve photos. That's the power of Lightroom and some of the tools we're talking about. This is the photo in question, just a really simple cityscape shot across the river into Temple Bar in Dublin. I was excited, it was my first visit, and I was taking photos of everything. But I started playing around with it, and I realized there's a couple of things that I do, which is primarily controlling light and color, and that gives me the ability to really convert something from not so great to a bit more interesting and a bit more dramatic. Now, I've already done some basic adjustments here in basic, so it started like that, and it's currently like that. As you can see, I've adjusted the light a little bit, which is dropping, excuse me, increasing contrast, dropping the highlights, bumping up shadows, adding a little bit of clarity across the entire photo, which I tend to do with cityscapes, not as often with landscapes, but with cityscapes, with all this concrete and brick and things like that, I feel like you can do that as long as you don't go too far. Uh, and the other big thing is I drop the temperature a little bit. So again, before and after. But for me, the magic comes when you start getting into masking, and that's what we're going to do now. Now, if you don't have my free editing guide for Lightroom Classic, you can get it at the link below. It's 17 pages of tips and tricks, and I talk about a lot of the different things that I do to really craft an image in Lightroom. That's uh, free to, uh, to anyone that subscribes to my email newsletter. Again, that link is below. And what I want to do now is jump into masking. Now, the first mask I'm going to get is a range mask uh, and a luminance range or luminosity mask specifically. And I talk about these masks in that ebook. I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time here kind of going through that because uh, it is a topic all of, of its own. And in fact, I've got n numerous videos in that playlist, which is all my Lightroom Classic videos that cover luminosity masks. They're incredibly powerful and they're super useful. And because they're based on light values, they give you the ability to control light really well. That's what we're doing here. So I've built this mask to mostly cover the bright parts and kind of fade into the midtones. But what I don't like is all this section down here being included. So I'm going to go into that mask and I'm going to click subtract and I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm going to pull that up here and just remove that from the overall mask. So there you go. So now my mask is really just that top portion of the photo and the brighter parts of that, not including what's down there on the bottom uh, lower portion where the linear gradient uh, resides. So that allowed me to really isolate that part of the photo. And what I want to do here is I want to start by dropping the exposure. So I'm going to do about a negative 0.3, let's say, something about like that. And I also want to cool the temperature off a little bit and I'm gonna do like a negative 14 or 15, something like that. All I'm doing is basically cooling off the top half of the photo. So if you look at the before and the after, before and after, it cools it off, which I think is nice uh, look to this kind of photo when it's really gray, but also it makes it a little bit darker, so it's starting to lean into that evening look, which is what I'm trying to achieve. The other thing that you'll see, which I'll talk about in a minute, is some color work that I do that really accentuates the difference between the cooler and the warmer stuff. And there's some warm lights there, and we'll do something here in a minute to help kind of accentuate that. So now I've got that first mask in place, so before and after. And the next thing I want to do is add a linear gradient. And this is going to be just at the bottom here. And what I want to do is just basically darken that to kind of frame the overall uh, bottom of the photo. So I'm going to drop that about a 5, you know, something like that, 0.58. All I'm doing is just kind of framing the bottom of the photo and uh, trying to lead the eye through, uh, you know, across the bridge and into Temple Bar. So simple, straightforward, very basic linear gradient before and after. And now the thing that I talked about to really accentuate that center of the photo is my next mask. And that one is going to be a radial gradient. 
I love these. I use them all the time. And on cityscapes, they're really, really useful because what I want to do is kind of bring some of this area to life. So maybe something about like that. And what I want to do here is brighten this slightly. So I'm going to draw attention to that section of the photo. And I do that by brightening it. And I'm also going to pull the highlights down slightly, just a little bit of a reduction in highlights, something about like that. I want to warm this up. So this is the opposite of what I've done in the other parts of the photo where I've been cooling it off. And that's one of the color moves that I talk about uh, or I mentioned a moment ago, which is I'm playing up the difference between the warm and the cool. I've got a lot of cool that I've created. I'm gonna create a little bit more, but I also wanna amp up some of that warm, so I'm creating that color tension, that's what I like to call it. Um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity. And in this case, I'm doing about a 25 or 30, so there it is, 29. And so what I've got, if you look at the before and the after, quite a bit brighter, a little bit more intense, and I might actually uh, increase that feathering a little bit, maybe increase the uh, size of that radial mask, and actually maybe drop it a little bit as well. There's a beauty of Lightroom. You can go back and edit these radial uh, linear gradients, all those. You can edit those masks even after you've set them, which I like quite a bit. So before and after. And now, if you look at all my masks, there it is before the masking, and there it is now. So we've come a long way, and I think this photo is really starting to take shape. There's two more things I want to do. I mentioned light and color. What I've done with the masking so far has pretty much been about light. Now we're going to talk about color. And for me, when I talk about color in Lightroom, I go to calibration because it is just the greatest color tool anywhere. I love it. It is so, so useful. And I'm going to pop in here and make some adjustments. Now, the, the great thing about calibration is it's really powerful. It can have a huge impact on your colors. The thing you need to be careful about is exactly the same thing that's so great about it. It's really powerful. It can have a huge impact. So you want to be careful. And I don't always move all of these sliders, but I'm actually moving every one of them in this video. So I tend to start with blue, and I'm actually making the hue uh, a little bit negative. And so uh, this was all reached by experimentation. So just to be clear, there's not really any science for me about using the calibration tool. It's just moving the sliders around, seeing what works and seeing what looks good on any particular photo. But you can see there, that's a little bit of that orange and teal look, which is how you achieve that in Lightroom. I think that looks great. Uh, I'm gonna move into green and I'm gonna go slightly negative there on hue and a little bit positive on the saturation. So that's a little bit of a change there. And then with the red, I'm actually gonna go positive on the hue. And again, this was all just experimentation and I kind of figured it out as I went along and then like a negative 22, so something about like that. Uh, the other thing I did is actually go into the tint slider, and I'm going to create a little bit more tint uh, in the shadows, right? So if you look at before and after, before and after, the colors are a bit more vibrant and a little bit more intense. So again, before and after, I just think that looks really good. And so that's what's so great about calibration. It just gives you so much control over colors, and the way it operates, it just really, I think, um, I think it's the best color tool in Lightroom. I use it all the time, and I'm, I'm never dissatisfied with it. You do have to experiment a bit because it's not like a science experiment where you just say, oh, go to five here or go to a negative five there. It requires experimentation, but it's, it's so, so worth it if you haven't used it. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to do is really just wrap this up with a vignette, and all I'm doing is just kind of creating a little bit more focus on the center of the photo, and I'm going to leave the feathering it. 50 and the midpoint at 50 because if you change the midpoint you see it how it broadens that um, vignette i don't really like that and the same with feathering if i go higher feathering it's actually kind of brightening that as well because it's fading over a greater area in this case there's a lot of fringe you know the edges of this frame not that great and so adding this vignette really kind of focuses in on the core center of the photo and i think helps accentuate the overall look so speaking of the looks if you want to look at the before and after there's the before shot. Pretty flat light, pretty boring. It was just starting to be like early evening. City lights were on, but it was still kind of gray and overcast. Now, a lot more blue, uh, but also a lot more warmth. And I'm playing up that color contrast, that color tension between the warm and the cool. But with some color moves and some masking moves to adjust the light, I'm able to create a photo that, you know, has come to life, right? Again, not that great of a photo to start with much better looking photo to end with. That's how I do it in Lightroom. It's just really powerful, gives you so much control to create these kind of dramatic and a bit more interesting cityscapes, 
even with shots that you might have overlooked uh, on your first run through uh, your folder. That's how I do it in Lightroom, before and after. Super powerful, just a few basic moves, some lighting adjustments with mask, a little bit of calibration, you're off and running. That's how it works, my friends. Check out my free ebook if you want to learn more, and I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care. Thanks for watching, and until next time, adios.